What's up guys, Dustin McDangles back here with another video, and this is the NHL Franchise Mode series with the Nebraska Bucks. And if you guys are actually new to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any future action. And also, make sure whenever you do subscribe, make sure you comment down below, I subscribe to the channel. I will be sure to get back to you with a comment, as well as all the other comments in this series, guys. But, uh, big episode here today. Obviously, it is the start of the 2024 season. I actually wanted to see how the team felt. Played the very first preseason game, just the first period. We won 5-3, to three, scored 5 goals in the first Team feels great. Super excited about the lineup. I did make a tweak to the fourth line. It does have the zero, so there is no plus on that line. We put Sorelli in on the bottom line and moved Roslovic up to the third line, which still gets that plus one. Our top two lines stacked with the plus three. Um, super excited about that. Hints, Shifley, and Kashe. And then we've got Volchinkov, uh, Boulet, and then we also have... Uh, Christian there on the second line so super excited with that take a look quickly here at our defense we got plus ones on every line uh, got our draft pick Lautner here first round third overall from Germany uh, super excited to see what he can do on this sort of this second pair he does work better on the first but I'd rather keep Petrangelo up here on the top pair even though he only fits technically only fits the bottom pair so maybe in this episode, if Petrangelo is not doing so great to start, maybe we move, maybe swap him for Lautner, um, and then maybe end up trading Petrangelo to possibly free up some cap space for next year, because we have, we're definitely going to run into some issues when it comes to the cap, as we'll actually take a look here at that. We got some big time players up for contract next year, as you can see uh, right here, guys. We got Tashe, Christian, uh, we got Byfield. Uh, we got a couple other players such as Sorelli. We might not even keep Sorelli around. We might trade him. Uh, Roslovic. I do like Roslovic, and I would like to try and keep him around. Um, just taking a look. It doesn't look like we can make an offer for him just yet. But taking a look here, Sorelli, he wants $3.3 million. So he is wanting to take a little bit of a pay cut, but doesn't want to sign. Uh, Byfield, he's going to want a big deal. $8.850 million. Um, which is a lot. Obviously, he is wanting to resign, so we might be able to get him down to like eight million. Um, and then, sort of going up here, uh, Christian. I want to see how he plays this year before offering him a lot of money. He wants six million. We got twenty-two to work with, so uh, six and eight. Obviously, that takes a lot of that cap space because then we also have Kashe, who's been absolutely unbelievable for us, and he wants seven million. And just taking a look here at his stats, I mean, he's definitely earned it. Uh, doing crazy good work for us ever since coming to us. I mean, you take a look here at his points for his career before coming over to uh, to the Bucks, and I mean, he's been, he's been doing great, above 50 points per season, uh, which is awesome. Obviously, he's up to an 88, so I'm excited to see what he can do this year. Um, again, if we were to maybe trade uh, Petrangelo out. He is 34. He is one of our oldest players on the roster. Maybe trade him now while he still has value left because he does have two years left in his contract. So maybe trade him out for another sort of defenseman at like maybe five million per year with like let's say three years left on their contract. That might be a good swap out because again we can move um, our new defenseman. Poulet, I believe, or not Poulet, well, I'm trying to think of his name off the top of my head here. He is new to the lineup. If we just quickly go to him, Lautner. So, Stefan Lautner, if we can maybe move him up to that top pair with Ahonen, he gets that plus three. So, it wouldn't be too bad. 83 defensemen on that first pair with Ahonen, who would, that would get him up uh, to an 89. So, it would be basically having like a Petrangelo already with Lautner up on that top pair. So I would be okay with that. Again, we'll, we'll see how things go um, this year, um, halfway through, and then we'll sort of go about making our trades. So uh, let's go ahead and start the simulation here uh, with the simming through the preseason. We'll take a look, see how the team's doing through the preseason, um, and if we need to make any changes to lines or anything of that nature. Uh, but so far, team sort of underperforming. Uh, which is interesting. We're basically sort of going 500 right now in the playoffs, which is interesting, but we'll simulate through this first month of the season. A couple guys injured 
off the start, which is quite interesting. I don't know if they had a bad offseason or what, uh, but we've got them here ready for the regular season. Simulation starting, definitely going to be interesting. We start off with a big dub against the Bruins. Uh, we come back against the Canadians, win 7-1, to one, and then the game here against the Colorado Avalanche. We also get a W, so starting off strong first week, 3-0. and oh. We continue that with a victory against the Ducks. Big division battle here against the Oilers and Petrangelo. He's out until December 19th. Oh, man, that kind of sucks. Maybe we maybe we look for that trade now. Um, because I don't know if we have any defensemen scratched. We don't have any defensemen scratched. So we're going to have to sort of go to roster moves here. First, we have to edit the lines first. Uh, so we're gonna have to we're gonna have to sort of put somebody in here for now. Sashian. Uh, let's first go to roster moves. And what's going on here? Extras, extra attacker, and we need sort of a better player in that. Uh, so that's fixed. So let's go ahead see who we're gonna call up here. Um, not too sure what we got here in the pipeline right now. I didn't actually take a look here at the start of the season. Obviously Rossi. Up to an 80 overall, which is really cool to see. He's been doing great. Um, might honestly call him up this year to see what he can do for us. He has 23 years of age. Um, and he also has three years left on his deal. So, uh, definitely going to be interesting to see what he can do. Uh, does Roy fit our lineups? He fits all of our, our lines, which might be, might be the call. So, we're going to call him up. Uh, we'll confirm that. Uh, and then maybe call up another defenseman. Although, I'd rather have the rest of the guys continue playing. So we'll go to edit lines here. Uh, before sort of moving on. We have to fix the AHL lines. Obviously, first line defenseman. Uh, we'll throw in Racian here. And he does get the plus one on that top pair. Which is really nice. Super, super happy to see that. Uh, go back to the NHL. Back to defense, and then we'll move Saishian out of there because he is not a defenseman. We'll throw Roy into the lineup, and he does fit all of the lines, so that is nice. Kind of want to move Tavares up a pair so he can continue growing. Uh, it is zero, which is I'm okay with, so we'll roll with that for now. Continue the simulation here against the struggling Oilers, and they actually get the dub against us, which is interesting. So a couple losses there in a row. Bishop is going to be out until November. Uh, so we're going to have to call up a goaltender here. Injuries early, never fun to deal with. So we'll call um, our boy uh, Vinny, Vinny back up to the lineup. Uh, and then we'll, we'll make sure we slot him into the backup position here um, to start this season off. Obviously, we've got Verlamov between the pipes as our sort of starting goaltender right now while uh, Bishop is out. Uh, we got to fix the AHL goaltender. And <clears throat> actually, we'll throw Sparksy in there. We'll actually no Sparksy. He's done enough for us. Uh, we'll we'll let the young guns here, 23 and 24 Hunter Jones. We'll let them get some time between the pipes here as we play the Dallas Stars. Uh, we got a player down. We beat the Stars seven to four, which is really nice. And then we also beat the Tampa Bay Lightning. So six and two for the month. Let's take a look here at team stats here very quickly. Volchenkov leading the way with 11 points in 8 games, so looking for a breakout year from him. The Jets are 8-0, uh, leading the way in the NHL, so they're going to be a tough team to try and get through. Obviously, a division opponent. Going to be really tough to get through them, but let's go ahead simulate all the way up through the month of November. Looking to get some players back, obviously. Uh, Rupo hints he's out till November 10th. Uh, so not too not too bad of a hit there. Obviously, first line player never want him going out. Um, so we'll move somebody in here. Who can we move in? We can move Appleton in. Does he fit the first line? He does. He does get the plus three as well. So we'll leave him up there, unless another player fits better. I'd rather keep the two plus threes right now rolling. Um, and then we've got some extras that we have to deal with. Three on three attacking. Uh, but yeah, no, the team is definitely playing very well to start the season off 6-2-0. and oh, We get another victory there against the St. Louis Blues. As we continue on here with the simulation, 
uh, another AHL player out. We lose to the Flyers 4-2. to two. Game here against the struggling Rangers. We win 5-2, to two, which is nice. Verlamov enjoying the ice time. Uh, we'll continue a little bit here before putting hints back into the lineup. Roslovic has been injured, so we'll actually edit those lines right now. Um, so again, a lot of this is sort of shuffling the lines uh, with injuries and, and going in and out. Obviously, we have to be aware of everything that's going on. Uh, we'll get hints back into the lineup. He is only an 83. I don't get how sort of the, the sim engine does sort of their, their edits when it comes to players and injuries and things of, of that such and how the overalls are affected. I don't know how that works because at the end of the season, are you kidding me? Hints is injured again. I have it set to whenever they're back from injury to go straight back to playing. So I don't get why I don't get why that is still being affected right now as we're going to throw Appleton throw Appleton back on that first line cuz he does get the plus 3 to keep that plus 3 for the other two players on that line and then we'll move Saichi in here in on the bottom pairing there with Kraus and Sorelli as we get a victory against the Red Wings we lose in a shootout against the uh, Blue Jackets which that that's okay it is what it is um, we've got some players here to move around uh, and get some guys back into the lineup uh, and Patrick Maroon he's down to a 69 overall which is crazy to see um, we'll go to the defensive side of things. Who needs to be moved back in? Woolian, 77 overall. Get him back into the lineup. So he does get that plus one. Uh, so 10, 3, and 1. The team is buzzing right now. Roslovic back. I'll let him heal up a little bit more here uh, while we continue to play on. Get a trade offer here. Swap of third round picks. Not looking for that. Victory against the Kings. Overtime loss against the Penguins. And we get a few more trade offers here for a goaltender. Starter medium potential. We'll decline that here for now. And Sysian's been injured. So we're going to edit the lines here. We'll put Roslovic back into the lineup as he is ready to go. Um, super excited to get him back. Obviously, great. he's been a great player for us. A great depth player um, as he's actually listed as a centerman. But we've got him on the wing. Two-way forward. We'll swap him back with Sammy Blaze. Back on that third line, which is good to get that depth back. The Calgary Flames actually a decent team. Uh, ben Bishop back. We'll let him heal up a little bit more as we will decline some more trade offers. Continuing this simulation, and we get an HL injury. Rupo's back, uh, so we'll let him heal up a little bit more here before continuing on. Tough loss there to the Jets. Another AHL injury, another trade offer here. Don't want to give up a third round pick and a goaltender prospect as we lose a shootout. So three losses in a row. Subban has been injured. So we'll continue with the simulation here. Uh, big game against the Panthers. We get a win, so we're back into the win column as we get some games here against some Western Conference opponents. Kashi is out. So we're going to have to get this sort of figured out here is Volchenkov. He's up to an 85. Um, interested to see who maybe we can put into the lineup as hints we can get him at least back into the first line to sort of cover for um, cover for what's his face? Kashe being injured right now is we'll put uh, Christian up on that top pair. Special teams obviously is going to need to be fixed here as we'll throw Tavares in there. He does get the plus one, which is nice. We got a couple other lines here we have to worry about sort of fixing right now. We'll throw Tavares on that one as well. And then we've got extras. We've got to deal with a three on three. And we will throw in. Right. We shall throw in Rupo here. There we go. Throw him in there. Lineup's fixed for now. Hopefully this injury bug sort of goes away. Big loss there to the Chicago Blackhawks as we are rounding out this month. Uh, Rossi's been injured. He'll be out till December 17th. That's tough. Um, and then we've got some more simming here. Woolian is back. Uh, continuing on here. And the King's actually struggling. So 
here at the end of the month of November here, second to last month before the end of the simulation for this episode. We are on top of the division. The Jets have actually struggled here ever since going 8 0. So we're on top of the division. Shifley leading the way with points 27 in 22, 12 goals, 15 assists, which is really nice to see there. Um, Petrangelo still not back. Um, and honestly, we might actually go ahead and try and move him right now. So let me see if there's any trades for him out there. So here we have a trade offer. Petrangelo for Tink Tinkinoff here. Three years. He is 81 overall elite medium defenseman. He was taken in the first round. Third pick overall. He does fit top four defensive pairings. And he is a defensive defenseman. So maybe a new shutdown defenseman to go along with our other um, sort of defensive prospect as well. And a sixth round pick to boot. And that trade was accepted. And Tinkinoff is injured. Um, so it's sort of trading two injured players. I do want to take a look here at Petrangelo, and again, that's going to open up things down the road here. Um, and it actually looks like he's good to play. I don't know why he was listed as injured. Uh, let's take a look here at the edit lines. Unless he's not in the NHL for some reason. Um, obviously, that was that was a big trade. Uh, I definitely want to get uh, Bishop back into the lineup. We'll get uh, Vinny out. Vinny's done great, I think. Uh, we'll move Bishop back into the starting position. Uh, we'll take a look here at the HL scratched. And there he is. Tinking off. He is in the HL for some reason. So we'll move him up to the NHL. Obviously want him up on the top roster. Uh, and it's just a matter of finding where he is. There we go. Tinking off. Get him up to the NHL. That is where he needs to be. Um, and then we'll take a look here quickly at the injury report. See how long he's out for. Uh, if it's a while, it is what it is. Hopefully it's not too long. And he's returning soon, December 4th, which is great. Uh, so we can get him into the lineup here shortly and get him progressing. Obviously, elite medium potential. That is awesome. Uh, and again, he will be with us here shortly. So nice trade there. Obviously, Petrangelo, great player now. Uh, but at the end of the day, we want sort of to sort of free up some cap space for future years. Obviously, we've got a lot to deal with here coming up shortly uh, with a lot of players needing to be re-signed, and we'll take a look at that in the next episode. Starting the month of December off with a loss, 4-2. Uh, we'll, another AHL injury, not too worried about that. Big game against the Sharks. We lose 2-1. Vancouver, we get the 4-2 victory, which is nice. Um, and we've got some moves here we got to do. So we've got one extra player we need to send somebody down. And the player who's going down is actually going to be Roy. We'll send him down to the minors. Um, and then, oh, actually, he was in our lineup, wasn't he? He was in our lineup, wasn't he? We're going to have to fix this around here because we've got one player not in the lineup right now. And that is a defenseman. So we're going to have to fix that up. Tinkinoff actually says he's able to get into the lineup. Um, and he fits sort of the second line. But I'd rather have him up there. Kirill Tinkinoff. Really nice. Good name. Let's check his stats. He had 24. This is So this is his first year in the NHL. So rookie year. Uh, 19 games played. He is a plus 2. 20 minutes a game. Lautner, so we've got two solid defensive defensemen here for the future, paired with some good players. So let's see here if we can move Jones. No, it doesn't work. So Tavares really only work doesn't really work in our lineup, which kind of sucks. Um, does Pesci? I'm wondering if Pesci fits better with him. He does not. So we got the three, one, and three. Uh, let's go back to our offense. We got some players who we can get back into the lineup right now. I believe. One of them is Kashe, which is nice. We'll get him back into the lineup. Uh, and then we'll move sort of our pairs back here. So we get the two plus three. So we're back to our our original lines right now. Uh, so super nice to have that back and all set here, square and ready to go for this month of December. We definitely need a good month. We're slipping down the standings there, it looks like, a bit. Uh, two losses in a row there to some Eastern Conference opponents. Uh, Rossi's back. We'll let him heal up a little bit more. We get a game here against the Leafs, and we lose 3-0. So 
Again, the team underperforming. We've got four straight losses in a row. Can we change that against the Predators and the Bruins? We get two wins back-to-back, -back, which were huge, huge games. As we continue on here to round out this month here, four games remaining, a win there against the Canadians. We get a loss to the Avalanche, a loss to the Ducks, and the last game of the month and the simulation here for today's episode is going to be against the Oilers. Tough team here in the division. We won 7-1, to one, so big game there. Let's now check out the team stats, team standing, see where everything sits. Obviously, Shifley, 43 points in 36 games. We finally have that superstar player, and he is performing. He's playing great, hasn't been injured, obviously, knock on wood. Uh, for that, but uh, all, all of our big players, uh, Christian, obviously bringing him over, Christian, I should say, uh, he's been playing great, 31 points in 36 games, Seth Jones playing great this year, having a bounce back year, uh, 29 points in 36 games, Boulette uh, with 27 and 36, Byfield 20 and 36, Appleton been playing very well, Rupo has been underperforming a little bit this year, but he's also been injured uh, for a lot of games as well. Um, as some other players, but uh, Lautner, obviously not not going to be one of our top scorers, but he, let's take a look here, he is, where's his plus minus, he's plus seven on that second pair, so that's really nice, super, super stoked to see that, uh, Tinkinoff, obviously bringing him over, he is a plus three now, uh, obviously getting rid of a top player like Petrangelo is going to hurt, but again, that's going to open up uh, some things here for next year, we'll take a look at that here after looking at these team stats, I do want to take a look at goalies, right now Bishop, uh, Bishop is underperforming, so he is 11 and 10 this year with a 9-11 and a 2-7-1 goals against average, so not terrible. Verlamov has actually been playing very well, 9-1-3 uh, and a 2-7-0 save percent or goals against average, so he's been playing very well. Uh, I do want to take a look here at the league stats. Uh, we'll take a look here at how Shifley is stacking up against the rest of the league, and he's he's in the top 10 with points 43, obviously 7 off the pace of Kucherov with 50 points, Dreisaitl and McDavid, Aaron Ekblad having a great year, so he's making a good push for the Norris Trophy, which is cool to see. Um, but yeah, then those are the stats. Let's take a look here at the standings here really quickly. 19, 14, and 3. Obviously not getting the job done completely. Uh, we'll take a look here at the Western Conference and the Calgary Flames leading the way with 52 points, 23, 7, and 6. As we are there in the second wild card spot there, 19, 14, and 3. 41 points. Uh, and we're basically like a game out of being in third. So it's a battle here in the Western Conference, it looks like, um, as we are actually tied in points. So again, it is tight sledding here this season. Golden Knights actually really struggling. Interesting to see that. But um, team obviously underperforming, I think, a little bit. Um, with how we sort of went out in the offseason, spent some money, made some trades uh, to get things taken care of. And obviously with the trade of Petrangelo, again, that's going to open things up for next year when it comes to the cap space. So now we've got $37 million to work with. And I feel like that's a little bit better here with trying to sign these guys. Byfield, uh, Vasiliev, Byfield, he won 6-4 right now. So let's actually try and get him down to like 6-1 for four years. Uh, yeah, we'll do, we'll do four years. We'll offer that up. Um, Sorelli, we went, we might want to move out. Kashe, he is getting a little bit older, and he only wants one year on his deal. So one year at seven million, eighty three overall. We might look to move Kashe. We might we might look to do that. I know he's been playing very well for us. He does get that plus three, but kind of underperforming a little bit this year. Um, and he wants seven million, so going to be interesting to see what what we're going to do with him. Uh, Sorelli, we might also move out. He doesn't want to sign with us. Three million, we might look to get another player for that sort of same price tag. Roslovic, um, he does want to re-sign for three million, and I want to see if we can maybe get him down to straight three for three years. I feel like that's sort of like a deal that we originally had way back in episodes. Uh, one through four with Andrew Shaw. Uh, similar type player. Uh, obviously better overall. is a lot younger. Um, and then we've got Sammy Blaze. Again, we might let him walk. Although he does want a fair deal right now to, at 1.475. So we'll give that to him. See what he says in the next episode. I do want to quickly take a look here at our goaltenders. 
Um, and they're they're locked up. So we're, they're locked up here for the next two years. So this year and next year, and then all of them up for free agency. So again, we might look to move. We've had we haven't really had a steady goaltender this entire series. That's sort of shut down guy. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see what we can do. Obviously, we've got a lot of cap space here for this year, about $15 million now since we moved Petrangelo, so maybe we make some more trades, if anything, but that's going to be it for today's episode, guys. If you did enjoy it, be sure to drop a like on this video. I hope you guys have a good one, and as always, stay dusty.